everyone, I'm Wolf, and today I'm going to show you how to make the perfect rose hip tea. But before that, remember to like, subscribe, and comment down below, and don't forget to press that notification bell down below. Right here, we have some rose hips. It is very easy to identify the rose hips by the rose hips themselves. This is a wrinkle rose, Rosa virginiana. All species of rose hips have 8.3 times more vitamin C per 100 grams than citrus. Now this species of rose hip is a very good rose hip for getting that really good sweetness for the tea, but in like late summer and into the fall, these still have all on the fruit itself spines, very small little spines, but those spines soften by the end of winter. So early spring is late winter is the best time to harvest the fruit and it's very easy to harvest the fruit you just take your uh, fingers and your thumb and just pluck them off and remember to grab and get the ones that are still red if you get the ones that are still a little bit of a brown color kind of like they're starting to decompose then those leave the um, seeds can still drop and the birds can still eat the seeds from it and good oils that they can have from there, but not for consumption for us. What you want to do is harvest a lot of these, then actually take them aside and dry them. You can use a dehydrator or if you have a confectionery oven, you can use that as a dehydrator also because of the fan that's in it. But you can air dry but that takes a couple days and these could rot in that period of time if it's a little bit of a moisture is in the air of where you're storing them so after you dry them up you're going to still have the seeds in like a hole and the fruit itself is going to be like the outer part of the fruit is going to be there and basically it's like imagine like breaking this up there's going to be a little bit like feathery parts to the seed and uh, you want to, what we're going to be doing is sifting, sifting the uh, seeds out of the fruit and getting more of the concentrated of just the fruit to make the perfect tea. Now we're inside and if you can see right here you can still see like some of the whole seeds or actually right here some whole seeds and then this stuff right here this stuff's almost like a cotton that's what I was talking about a little bit of fluff and then there's the dried fruit all in there and we need to sift that to get the just the dried fruit for the perfect tea. So what you're going to want to do next is when you have the dried fruit right here of the rose hip, you want to sift it out. But before you sift it out, all this cotton kind of like material you have to take out. So a simple way to do that is put that right into the bowl straight in and just little taps and that will settle the seeds and the fruit to the bottom and anything light will go on the top. And then just take your fingers and pull out what feels like almost like cotton. You want to take that, you can put this back outside or right into your compost. It has some uh, nutrients deep down inside of it that is great for your nutrients for your garden. So pull that right out as much as you can. This is what it looks like without the like cotton-like uh, material with the seeds and fruit. So that's just seeds and fruit, and that's the uh, cotton-like material right there. So I pulled that out, and you can just toss that into the compost. Now what's left over is you want to pour out the seeds and the fruit just onto a piece of paper or plate, and you want to sift the seeds out. You can crush the seeds up with a mortar and pestle and uh, get the oils that are deep in it that are very uh, good and nutritious, but we're making a little bit more of a simple point without like smashing up and grinding the seeds. We're just going for that outer skin fruit layer that is very sweet and delicious. So pour that right into the sieve and then strain it out you're gonna get small little particles of rose hip in there. And don't just waste the seeds. The seeds you can still use. You can toast them up 
after this, and they taste just like popcorn. They're fantastic. And if you grind it up and make a flour out of it, imagine a flour that tastes like popcorn. And then you just empty it out. Right there, has tons of seeds. And what you're left with is about a teaspoon of the powder. So you need to have a lot of this just for a little bit uh, amount of the dried fruit of the powder that you're gonna make. Now next you want to do is, well, while you have about a tablespoon of the dried fruit, you wanna add it to a one pint mason jar. And add a cup and a half of semi hot but warm about 180 degree water that's the best temperature to make a cup of tea or even coffee so put that right in and you want to let this sit for about 10 to 15 minutes and just add the lid and let it sit now it's been about 15 minutes and the coloration of it has turned more of a yellow gold coloration. Let's smell. Has the classic rose hip smell, very faint smell to there. And the way to filter this is you can use a paper towel or a coffee filter. Stick it right over the top. Take the ring out of the lid. Take the ring and put it right on top of the uh, mason jar and then poke a hole right towards the top of one part and just pour this right into the cup but don't pour out of the hole because then you can actually get grounds into your drink and you want to pour this out without having the strain stop so a little bit of liquid still left in there but you can use that liquid to stick in your compost and it has a really good nutrients that you can use to grow your other plants because a lot of the plants actually need vitamin C to actually boost up and grow even bigger and better. Now let's smell this without the grounds. Smells basically the same way. It has a nice like goldish amber color to it. Let's try. Very subtle, sweetness right off the bat, right up front, has that, that faint rosy flavor right to it of like the rose petals, but it's not like an upfront heavy flavor. You could put more rose hip in it to make it stronger or less if you want to make it a little bit more faint of a flavor. It's about a tablespoon of the fine grinds of just the fruit, not the seeds or the, the whole entire fruit of like the cotton stuff none of that you don't want that with the perfect tea but there's definitely sweetness there it has more of a sweetness towards almost like pineapple weed like chamomile almost that similar kind of sweetness that you get from that this is good and that's how you make the perfect rose hip tea if you want to see more go down in the description below click the link to my channel or press the round subscribe button to help me out to get to 10,000 subscribers and up next time remember to get outside get fresh air and have fun see ya